Some fragrances are so similar to each other that it actually feels redundant to buy them if you already own one of these fragrances. Today we're going through 10 different pairs of fragrances that I think if you already own one of these, you don't need to buy the other. Let's begin. First of all, Bulgari's Man in Black and Gentleman Reserve Privé by Givenchy. So Man in Black is a classic. I own the original and now I think the original is actually discontinued according to some legends, some rumors. The new Man in Black Parfum that is very similar to the original just seems to be a little bit sweeter, deeper and longer lasting. It is a spicy, boozy, vanillic DNA with a hint of tobacco, almost reminiscent of the original Spice Bomb but made more mature. It's quite sexy. I really like the original at all times and I liked how long lasting it was as well, even the original. Now, Reserve Privé has a very similar vibe, boozy, more powdery with the iris, mature, sexy, handsome, and also very long lasting. I think these two fragrances have a very similar style, a very similar age range. I would say it would be very difficult to own both in your collection because you're very likely to only reach for one. I know this is a very subjective opinion, but I would say go for the fragrance that you prefer notes wise. If you like a more powdery iris fragrance, go for Reserve Privé. Something with better projection, that would be Reserve Privé as well. But I will say go for one of these and they'll be your mature, handsome evening slash day night fragrances. Mont Blanc Legend Spirit and Rosasi Hawas. Now, Legend Spirit is actually a clone of Invictus Aqua 2016, which itself kind of cloned Rosasi Hawas if you look at the release date chronological order. And I made a video as well a long time back in you know, one of the, our most popular videos actually, I think it's the Hawas versus Legend Spirit versus Aqua 2016 video. So. I think Legend Spirit is a really good cheapy. It is aquatic bubblegum perfumery with bright muskiness that smells very citrusy, fresh, summery, fresh out of the shower, very easy to understand, very easy to like, and it lasts a good amount of time, around six to eight hours. Hawass is a bit more Middle Eastern, more intense in that aquatic aspect, lasts 12 hours with a loud projection. I would say Legend Spirit gives you fantastic value for money, but Hawass gives you that performance and maximum compliment factor. I don't think you need to own both. I think they have a very similar genre and you will pick them for very similar occasions. Meaning that, again, if you have both in your collection, I do think one of them will inevitably end up gathering dust. 37.9% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys really wanna see our channel grow, go ahead and click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%, thank you. This always gets me hate, but Dior Homme 2020 and Bleu de Chanel, both citrus woody ambers with a high focus on ice, we super. However, I feel like Dior Homme 2020 is a bit easier to understand, more beginner friendly, whilst Bleu de Chanel is a bit more complex, a little bit darker, with the higher focus on the ambers and the incense note in there as well, and the patchouli. I do feel like Dior Homme 2020 saw the success of Bleu de Chanel. I wanted to sort of recreate that in a Dior way. I do insist that it is a similar fragrance to Bleu de Chanel. They both have pretty similar performance. So the original Dior 2020, I got around six to eight hours. With my Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum, I get eight hours with media projection. So very similar fragrances in my opinion. One is more complex than the other. See which one you like. I don't think you need to own both. Very similar function, both versatile fragrances you can wear in the day and night and get you a lot of compliments. Okay, evening iris fragrances again. Prada L'Homme Intense, a masterpiece, and Dior Homme Intense, a masterpiece. This might be a controversial one as well because they're both great fragrances. You know, should you limit yourself to only one of them? I think probably yes, because in my experience, I don't really touch my Dior Homme Intense. I have it for review purposes, but I feel like people will have one preference for the style of Evening Iris Perfumery or the other. I prefer the sharper leather, more masculine Prada L'Homme Intense style as opposed to the more romantic, soft, cozy style of Dior Homme Intense. Both fantastic Evening Iris scents, both great for being cold weather signatures. I think Prada L'Homme Intense is a little bit more versatile, more masculine, a little bit more in your face. <laughs> it's a louder projector, at least my bottles at the very least, compared to Dior Homme Intense. But again, I feel like it's a very subjective, preferential opinion kind of ordeal where you need to try both and see which one you prefer. But I do think they will be redundant if you own one, the other one will just be gathering dust. Another controversial pairing, La Nuit de L'Homme, the original, and Dolce & Gabbana, the one, Eau de Parfum, I will say, probably just go for the one Eau de Parfum and don't go for the original La Nuit. They're both notorious, very safe, very sexy, poor performing date night fragrances. So if you're going for a safe, I don't know, let's say first date kind of fragrance, you probably reach for Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum. 
the reason I say don't get the original Lenui is because although I think it's great, it's still worth owning on its own as, an, as a fragrance standalone. But I do think the flankers such as Blue Electrique are better to get instead if you can or get the Le Parfum which is more long lasting, has a spicy, peppery and fruity bad boy essence to it, more sexy, more daredevil-esque, a really underrated flanker. So that's why I say go for the one Eau de Parfum and then a flanker, one of those two flankers I mentioned for Lenui. The most wanted parfum by Azaro and Stronger With You, absolutely. I would actually say any of the Stronger With You line fragrances could fit into this pairing here. I do think the Most Wanted Parfum by Azaro took a large influence from the Stronger With You line in general, as did pretty much hundreds of fragrances now at this point. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it does seem like the Stronger With You DNA is just spread everywhere in the industry right now. The Most Wanted Parfum is strong, woody ambers with a fruity nuance to it. Very sexy, beautifully blended, very easy to understand, but just a great blend overall. Then Stronger With You, again, is a bit more complex, a little bit more of the original take. The Absolutely Flanker is one of my favorites. The chestnut is in there, the rum boozy note is distinct to that flanker, which is really sexy. I would say, again though, you are not going to wear both, in my opinion. I think it's unlikely, unless you really love that kind of DNA. But from my perspective, at the very least, I would always usually pick, I think, the most wanted parfum over Stronger With You, absolutely. But they're both great scents, but I just think they overlap in functionality too much and style. So Spiro Vibrato and Creed Aventus, both expensive, woody, citrus, smoky fragrances that can be worn as signatures. Vibrato doesn't have that playful pineapple, which a lot of guys like, in fairness, but Creed Aventus is overpriced. <laughs> it doesn't last as long as it should for a lot of batches, but it depends on which batch you get. But Suspiro Vibrato smells more expensive, more sharp, clean, fresh. It has lime, green notes, powdery notes in there with a sharp woody and broxen. It is not a clone of Creed Aventus, but I feel like they both have a very similar functionality once again. Clean, bright, professional, expensive smelling. So choose one or the other, in my opinion, for the functionality will be overlapping again for these two fragrances. For me, I will say the better value for money right now is Suspiro Vibrato. This next pairing might be very obvious, but Prada Luna Rosa Carbon and Dior Sauvage de Eau de Toilette. So uh, Prada Carbon isn't exactly a clone of Sauvage, but it's definitely Prada's take, I would say, on something like Sauvage. It has this bright, clean, fresh out the shower vibe that Sauvage has, but it tones down the black pepper, it tones down the ambroxan, and makes something like Sauvage, that shower gel DNA, more Prada-fied, elegant, soapy, really handsome musks that kind of remind you of freshly pressed ironed shirts that kind of idea, very clean, elegant. So if you like that more elegant approach to something like Sauvage, go for Carbon. Or if you want the more, let's say, probably higher compliment factor fragrance, Sauvage Eau de Toilette, go for that instead. But it's a bit boring because everyone owns it. So if you want a different, more unique fragrance, go for Carbon. Choose one of the two. I really don't think you need to own both. Boss Bottled Elixir by Hugo Boss and Sauvage Elixir. I still insist on this comparison. Not everyone agrees with me, but I do feel like Hugo Boss Bottle Elixir obviously came out after Sauvage Elixir, kind of saw the success of it. It took that intense, sweet, spicy DNA, but although I will say Sauvage Elixir is not as sweet as Boss Bottle Elixir, but it has a very similar style of being oriental style in the traditional family wheel and very intense with the spiciness, vanillic. Some people say it's an incense bomb. I don't really quite get that, but I can understand why people say that. It feels a bit fuzzy to me as a fragrance. If you have to think about a fragrance's texture, it's an abstract idea, but I would say Hugo Boss Bottle Elixir it smells like a fuzzy, warm, inviting cloud around you that lasts a really long time, 10 hours with a medium projection. So Vaj Elixir is more beastly. It's a bit more intense, headache inducing in my opinion. So if you want a more intense, idea or an intense approach to that kind of spicy oriental style, go for Sauvage Elixir. It doesn't hold back any punches. That's the kind of phrase you go for if you want that style. But if you want a more cozy, inviting, more relaxed approach to that spicy DNA, go for Boss Bottle Elixir. One or the other, I don't think you need to own both. And lastly, for this pairing, I will say that these seem very obvious, but not really anyone ever speaks about the similarity. And that is Fahrenheit's Le Parfum and Ben Lieferman Intense. Both woody, leathery, boozy fragrances that are mature. 
they smell super similar actually. I want to say in their blend, but more in their style. They have just this matching style completely. I really do not think you'll ever reach for both at the same time because if you're gonna choose that style, you'll pick one or the other, 100%. Benny from Intense, again, is better value for money, but Fahrenheit Le Parfum is more smooth. You pay a bit more, get a slightly more smooth experience. But I will say Bentley does smell more expensive than his price tag as well. Both perform really good. I don't have any performance issues with either of them. I think Fahrenheit Le Parfum might be discontinued, so try to get it whilst you still can, but I will say you don't need to own both. And that concludes this video, guys. I'm always trying to make sure you consolidate your collection, go for quality, not quantity. So hopefully this video series always helps you guys. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my recommendations. Are there any other fragrance pairings that you think are redundant to own if you own one or the other? Let us know in the comments down below, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous video on this idea, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.